Hello and welcome to Workshop 1138. I'm Robin and today I'm going to be talking about this microphone. It was produced by JVC from their professional video range in roughly 1995. Its model number is MVP612U. Uh, I bought it on eBay for about 50 British pounds. Um, but at the time it was new, I've sort of seen information on the web suggesting its list price would be more in the region of sort of $800 or more. Um, obviously the piece of equipment that it would be connected to, um, the big shoulder mounted cameras, um, they were in the order of sort of $7,000 or more and are now probably completely obsolete, which is probably why it was so cheap. Um, now I'm expecting that it is going to be a well engineered and high quality piece of kit. Um, and I would very much like to connect that to one of these, a standard domestic camcorder. So that's the purpose of this video today. Of course, any project such as this could entail the risk of damaging some equipment. Um, I'm not an electronics engineer, so uh, any of the electrical principles uh, mentioned in this video, if you're unfamiliar with them, there's no substitute for going and doing a bit of research on the internet. Um, and certainly if you don't know the difference between balanced and unbalanced microphone signals, I suggest that would be a great place to start. Now I thought a sensible place to start with this video would be to have a look how I'd connected some microphones to the camcorder previously. Now I'm recording the audio for this video, or at least most of it, with some Rode shotgun microphones and those have got balance outputs and I built this little converter box to provide the input to the camcorder using a few of these. So these are audio, this is an audio transformer and this is enough to handle one of the cha two channels. So this is how things are hooked up inside that case to perform the conversion. This is of course just showing one of the two stereo channels. So why not use these transformers for our initial tests? Because the two sets of windings are electrically isolated from each other, it should allow us to connect our stereo mic signals to our input in relative safety. So if we have a closer look at the cable that comes with it, we'll notice there's six pins and it's an indexed socket. And we've got pretty much the same arrangement at the other end. We can unscrew this connector. If I'm careful. Revealing that we have, if I can get that in focus, the same six pins at the end. And having done a bit of research on the web, I can confirm that the pins, as we go around from this sort of indexing slot we've got at the top here, we've got the right hand signal pin, we've got the supply voltage pin, which is between 8 and 10 volts. We've got the ground for the supply voltage. We've then got the left hand signal pin. And then we've got two grounds, which I used for audio, but in fact are coupled internally within the back of the microphone to this ground for the supply. Um, so this is an unbalanced microphone and we are going to be connecting it to an unbalanced input on the camcorder. So let's have a look at my test setup. Um, I have the microphone with its own cable. I've soldered to the pins on the end of the cable, as I'm not going to use this cable for anything else. Um, I've connected these through to a breadboard and we've got a 9 volt battery that's got a little switch on it and we've got two circuits here. Uh, one of the channels I'm using an audio transformer and for the other channel I'm going to use some resistors. So looking at the input side the audio transformer has two windings and this little bit of orange cable here is actually connecting these two pins together so we can provide a signal across these two pins and use both windings at once. Um, the impedance of this transformer 
is actually 600 ohms, which is precisely what the microphone that we're connecting up is expecting. Um, so we've got a ground wire. Now I'll just explain where the grounds go. We've got a ground wire which is going to the, the microphone and is also commoned up with the battery and the ground connections to one side of the transformer. The other side of the transformer is connected to this white wire which I can't remember whether it's the left or the right signal. On the output side we've also got the two windings connected together so these are in series and we've connected one of the output wires to the ground on my camcorder microphone cable and the other to one of the signal wires. Um, obviously if we were doing a stereo um, setup we'd have two transformers each of them using the same ground. We have an indication here that the ratio between the input and output windings are not the same. Uh, this effectively will give us double the voltage out that goes in. Um, and the output side of this transformer is actually about 2.4 kilo ohms of impedance, which is approximately what we'd expect for the input of a camcorder to be expecting. Um, I should also probably mention that I'm using the three pin microphone socket. I have seen some mention on the internet of some other Canon cameras or camcorders using a four pin or expecting a four pin microphone plug. Um, one of the connectors is actually used in that case for transmitting power. Um, now I've buzzed the cables through on my setup and I know that my camcorder is expecting the three pin type. So looking at the other circuit, which is far simpler, we've got a ground wire, which is of course the same, it's the naught volts from the battery and also connected to the ground on the microphone. We've also got this yellow wire, which is the signal from the other one of our stereo channels. Uh, we've got two resistors wired in parallel uh, between these wires and one of them is a 4K7 resistor which is a dummy load to simulate the sort of load that would, we'd get if we were connecting across the camcorder mic inputs. Uh, the other one um, is something I've put in for two reasons. One of them I'm trying to get approximate the 600 ohms impedance that the output from the microphone is expecting to drive into um, and the other is to work when there is no load no load resistor i.e. when if this resistor was removed it would be the equivalent of we're connected to the battery and the microphone is on but we don't actually have a plug in a microphone socket anywhere uh, one of the things is with no load on at all, um, there seems to be a four and a half volt difference between the output from one of these signal wires and the ground. So what I wanted to do is to introduce this other resistor that will be in all the time. So I've now wired the circuit to the oscilloscope. We're going to measure the voltage difference between the two ends of those resistors. And if we look at the scope, I'll turn the battery on. Now we're 20 millivolts per division, so as I turn it off and on again, you'll see a few spikes, but that decays quite quickly and it only achieves sort of 100 millivolts or so. And if I blow um, across the microphone, we get a very similar sort of signal level. So I'm not overly concerned with that at the moment. Um, but and we can see that turning up on the scope. 
so that's pretty good. That's working quite well. So I've connected the oscilloscope to the other circuit which has got the audio transformer in and as we'll see we've got much stronger signal coming through. Uh, this is probably due to the difference between the number of windings on the primary and secondary side and you can see my voice coming through and that very strong signal. However, we don't have any shielding around this transformer and if I switch on the lights that I've been using on the table we suddenly get a lot of electrical noise. So obviously we'd need to do something about that. So the next thing I'm going to try, I'm going to make up a lead using this resistor circuit without the, this dummy load of course because the camcorder is going to be providing that and we'll see what happens. Of course it would have been nice to be able to get a, a socket to which this could be connected um, but unfortunately I was unable to figure out exactly what type of connector this was. Um, I did buy something that looked like it was entirely appropriate and it turns out to be half the size so that was a bit of a waste of money. Um, this cable is quite short. So having stripped that back we can see that we've got a six-way multi-core cable with an overall shield as well. Now I'm going to take the screw-in socket and I'm going to cut as close to the back as possible. We'll see if we can manage to expose any pins that could be soldered to. Well I've stripped it back quite a way to get this far and I can just see that rather than being bunched together we're just getting to the point where the cables are starting to separate so I don't think we've got far to go. And after digging down even further finally have exposed the pins. So having dug the last of this white stuff out of the bottom of the connector I've exposed all the pins. I'd be quite happy to solder to that. So here's the 3.5mm stereo mic plug. Uh, you'll notice that we've got the 680 ohm resistors bridging the left signal and ground and the right signal and ground. Um, the strain relief uh, isn't very adequate on here. Um, I might put some epoxy or some silicone sealant on there before I finally seal everything up. So this is the piece that goes on the back of the mic. We've got the little tab in there for the indexing slot um, and I've got my power connectors here and my audio signals here. I'm taking advantage of the fact that the uh, grounds are all common together inside the back of the mic. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this area probably with hot melt glue. Um, this has been salvaged off a different type of connector. Um, and hopefully that should all go together well. Um, if by any chance the left and right signals <laughs> happen to be the wrong way around, of course there's a 50% chance whenever I do it that they are, um, then what I'll do is I'll unsolder the wires at the other end and take care of it there. So the power solution I've gone for is a 9 volt battery in um, a box with this switch on it. Uh, also it's detachable via these connectors. Um, that also gives me a bit of flexibility as to where I mount the battery um, I could have other boxes with longer leads and that sort of thing. Well this is what it looks like with everything completed. Uh, I'm ready to take this out for a test. Um, I've got a homemade shock mount here which is working quite nicely. Um, I'm going to stick that on top of my camera rig and I know that filming on a windy day um, these things do pick up a lot of wind noise as pretty much any microphone does. So I've got this very impressive homemade wind jammer. Thank you. 
Well, I think it's about time we brought this to a close. I'd like to summarise by saying I thought the microphone performed really well. It was picking sounds out from the distance that I never expected it to, and it did a really good job in super directional mode at just sort of confining everything to that 90 degree arc and discarding everything else. So that was really good. I did have a couple of issues. Um, nine volt batteries, nine volt alkaline batteries in particular, um, most of them don't give out 9 volts for very long. In fact, um, for an alkaline battery, you might get 10 or 15% of the life out of the battery before it drops below the 8 volts. And of course, that is below the range at which the microphone is supposed to be run. Um, so I'm going to look, in, look at providing some other alternate power source um, and see how that goes. Uh, one of the other issues, of course, was the right angle connector that I was using to connect to the camera. Um, that was fouling on some of the plastic on the camera's case um, and some, depending on which direction you plugged it in you could find that the socket, the plug would eventually lever out of the socket um, and that obviously is wrong, it's bad. <laughs> and thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll join me next time in workshop 1138.